talk is Jay Chris, and uh, I'll let him take it from here. Hey everyone, uh, it's really fun to be back. I was, you know, I lived in Portland for a long time, and I moved down to the Bay Area to do a startup, and we're finally big enough that I could move back to Portland. So I've been back for like maybe a month and a half now. Um, thanks. Um, so it's really fun to be back here because I actually got married on this stage, um, and you know what? About seven years ago now. So. Um, so yeah, so I made a little NPM module that there's like, I would, I'm going to say there's a 25% chance of this, you know, sort of experiment working uh, based on I haven't tested it on the firewall yet, but uh, I have an IP address, I mean the DHCP address and stuff, and, uh, and so if you go NPM install Twitter fight and then run NPM start, you might be able to play along. And anyway, I just wanted to like pre-game that a little bit. There will be another slide with that information in a second. Um, so, yeah, uh, I work for Couchbase. We're a uh, NoSQL JSON document database. Uh, and I want to like do like a quick pitch about my day job because my day job doesn't involve Node.js. Like I got to write, I, I love speaking at Node conferences because it gives me an excuse to write some Node because um, it's really like the language that I enjoy writing. Uh, but my team at Couchbase is building this mobile thing for Android and iOS that, you know, sort of, it speaks the Apache CouchDB replication protocol, but you can have a big, you know, scale, high performance thingy on the back end and, you know, hopefully uh, not have to worry about, you know, how you're shuffling data back and forth to all those occasionally connected devices that your users have in their hands. Um, so you can come talk to me later about mobile stuff if you want. Um, that's really, you know, that's what I do all the time. Uh, so today I want to talk about uh, this hands-on, real-time text analytics stuff. Um, and what we're doing in the code I'm going to show is kind of the tip of the iceberg of something that we built as a proof of concept for a customer a couple years ago. Uh, but the idea is you just have all these tweets flying at you really fast and you need to store in a compact way um, that can be, you know, shared across uh, all your users. Ooh, I wonder what I did. Um, and, uh, and so you, you know, we're essentially just incrementing little counters in Couchbase server, which is, uh, you know, a low overhead operation and then running a query to sort of get the things that have been counted the most. Uh, so you don't need to go get Couchbase to do any of this today, um, but it's easy to get. And there's, uh, you know, an NPM package for the client driver for Node.js. Um, the reason why people use Couchbase, just to give you uh, the context, because like, um, you know, there's sort of, there's some simpler to get started with database systems, but if you have the kind of, uh, you know, app where you might need to grow, you know, dynamically under load. All of a sudden, a bunch more users show up. Then, our, you know, our sweet spot is being able to add more nodes to that cluster and have the data rebalance across it. Um, and then the clients directly access where that data lives, so you get, you know, low latency, sort of memcached uh, class speeds, you know, less than a millisecond for the most part, um, access to that data. So that's the technology that that we're going to be playing with today. Um, and in order to build something that's, you know, that sort of puts that premium on performance and scale, we are not a relational database. So I guess, you know, this is probably a pretty progressive room, but I'm curious how many people have uh, used NoSQL databases. All right, so kind of like everybody in here practically. Um, so I don't have to tell you too much. Basically, um, you know, we're just storing JSON in the database. And so I have kind of one way that I like to think about this is that the schema you know, sort of emerges from what your code does, right? So you're writing features or, you know, pulling in some, some data from an API and you're going to discover the schema. You're not going to sit around and like, um, you know, s spend a bunch of time on a whiteboard drawing, you know, arrows with stars on them uh, to come up with your schema. It's, it's really something that falls out of your data. Um, and so, you know, like, a few years ago, day one of a development project would often be like, let's hang out at the whiteboard and draw, you know, essentially what becomes our database tables until we've kind of figured out the basic model and then we go write some migrations and, you know, now we can write code against the database. Um, but I don't see day one looking like that with projects. 
anymore these days. It's more like day one of a project is here is, you know, here's some valuable data. Maybe it's the LinkedIn API. Maybe it's, um, you know, some kind of, you know, Portland mapping data or TriMet times or something. But, you know, there's like already some valuable data or maybe some noisy data you want to extract some value from. And so you're going to take that data and just dump it into something, right? And then start running exploratory queries on it to try and figure out what value you can extract from it. Um, and it'd be crazy to, at least in, in my mind, it would be crazy to like come up with a you know third or fourth normal form schema for whatever is coming over the wire from you know the Portland um, you know sort of like the the Civic APIs data, or you know maybe the GitHub API or something. Um, so rather than you know, sticking that into some data, you know, strongly typed data store that is going to throw errors anytime that source data format changes a tiny bit. Uh, it makes a lot more sense to put that into a database that's designed just to store JSON. And, uh, and so, like, I think that's, like, kind of non-controversial. Like most people are doing something that looks like that, you know, storing the results of these, you know, kind of, like, web spidering and API queries and stuff in something that looks more like a document store. Um, what I think is, and it's like every time I talk to somebody about this, it gets a little bit less controversial. But I like the idea of treating your, you know, your special magic application data that you know you wrote this app for a long time, um, really important to you, right? It's your data, and a lot of times people will get a little bit wary about storing that in a um, you know loosely typed storage container. Uh, they'll want to have a schema for that because the data is so important for their app. Um, but I think if you treat the data that your users give you, you know, sort of like you treat the data that, that Twitter API gives you or something, uh, you may, uh, well, you get, you know, you don't have to fuss about it as much, and that's fun. Um, but also, as your application changes over time, you're not always having to migrate the old data. Uh, there's trade-offs, right? You have to kind of address the fact that some of the data could be in the old format and some in the new format. Uh, but I think that you know, as long as what you're really doing is capturing the user's intent, the user gave you something, they gave it to you for a reason, like you should save it um, and, then, and then figure out what to do with it. And sort of it's a different model from, you know, distrusting everything the user hands you and checking it if it's a schema. Um, but I think it's, yeah, just as valid and, and has some advantages for apps. So, yeah, so what is this Twitter fight thing that I don't have a whole lot of time to show you, but... Uh, it's a little, it's kind of two things. I've got a server running on my laptop that maybe if, you know, you ran NPM start Twitter fight on yours, you would connect to my server and start um, spewing tweets at me. Um, and so then it's got a UI here um, that we'll see new things get added to. I guess I'll give you a little tour of it. Um, here is one of my Twitter accounts. Here's another one. Um, Basically, I log in via the client and tell it some search terms that I think are going to, you know, create a lot, a high volume of tweets. Um, and then it starts tokenizing those tweets and saving them in the database. And then this is the query that shows, you know, how many unique tokens each of these Twitter accounts got, and um, you know, sort of ranks them. The, the text size is based on, you know, how many times those words showed up in, uh, you know, in the result set. So, uh, let's see, I've got, here's the server running, and, and here's one of the clients. So I'll start the client, and I don't know, maybe, maybe this would work the same on your machine. Um, and, uh, and so, they want to know what's my Twitter username, and my password, and then um, there's, I'll search for node PDX, but then I've also been searching for like real popular, you know, things that people talk about, like Facebook. That'll give you a lot of tweets. Um, and so now this JChris account is going to start blasting, uh, matching tweets into the server, and the server is processing those and, and storing those into these MapReduce documents. And you'll see, you know, that number goes up. So is, if anyone's trying to run it from your laptop, are you, like, are you running into an error that says can't connect to mineral.local? Yeah, that's too bad. Um, that's just how the, how the Wi-Fi is configured, I guess. Um, so in the future, I'm going to have to run this in the cloud. Um, the cloud is where you control the DNS, I guess. Um, all right, so uh, 
So let's take a tour of this. I mean, I guess to make it a little bit more interesting, I can, um, I'll log in again with that other account and, uh, you know, we'll search for Twitter and uh, PHP and uh, Java. So now we can really have a contest between Facebook and Node PDX. And okay, so now we're getting a bunch of tweets off that stream and we'll start to see you know, both of these accounts are now incrementing over time. Um, so yeah, uh, what I what I really wanted to do was give a tour of this application. Like, it's not gonna, uh, it's it's not anything like what Substack showed earlier, but it's uh, just sort of some basic, you know, Node.js that gets the job done. So I'm using prompt and uh, request, and you know, that's kind of it for anything that's really heavyweight. Um, I wrote a module called Twitter Stream, and uh, we'll go take a look at that in a second. But, you know, start from the bottom. We're going to prompt for the setup, and then once we have that prompted data, we're going to call, you know, the basically the body, uh, the, the main function with that prompted data. So, you know, what's your username? Uh, what's your password? And, and pick your, um, your search terms. So now we're going to Twitter Stream search. And this is uh, an example of, you know, the Node.js uh, small modules, you know, loosely joined thing because it's just a little module that calls request, um, you know, after building a URL. And the important thing about this module is that you shouldn't use it. You should use um, Node Twitter Stream instead because it has the exact same API, but I didn't discover it until after I wrote this. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I hope you guys can see that. I guess it's not, not real important. Um, so yeah, all this does is uh, connect using request and then on the data event, we try to parse the JSON. I could probably be like a, a little smarter about, you know, I think every once in a while we're just swallowing errors where we got like half a buffer or something um, instead of actually concatenating, you know, these bytes together until they're JSON. Uh, but Twitter does a pretty good job. So every time we get a tweet, we're going to call your callback. And, and so that's kind of that API. So, so now here's what happens every time we get a tweet. The very first time we register our user, I won't go into the details of that, right? But we just kind of stick their username. Hey, somebody found my computer. Good job. Um, oh, wow, what is that? Nice. Uh, yeah, my math is my math is getting interesting here. Um, so we'll see if we can spot that bug as we're digging in. Uh, so, so now we're going to handle this tweet, and uh, let's go find that code. Uh, we log it, you know, to my um, console here, which you guys don't get to see, and then we just post it over to the server. Or, actually, wait, we log it to your console if you're running this, you can see it. Um, and so then we just post it over to my laptop here, where the real magic happens. Uh, and that's kind of it, right? So this, that's all this client does. It's just a little command line uh, interface that, you know, looks like this when you're running it. Um, so you can see, you know, those are all the, all the tweets pouring through. So we'll go back um, to the server now, which is its own little NPM module here. Um, and I guess the best way to start is from index.html. So all we're doing is querying this, this URL. It doesn't really... You know, sort of matter what it's called because there's only one API endpoint on the whole server. Um, and we're asking for JSON, and when we get the JSON, we are going to, uh, you know, iterate over each user and paint them using the mustache templating language. Um, so the template looks like this. And what you'll learn from reading this code is that we've got an array of words that corresponds to each user and uh, the font size for each word is coming in over this, uh, this JSON AJAX request. So how did we make this array of, of users, each with a list of words with, with font size that, that we're using to render this list that seems to be generating a bunch of duplicates I wasn't expecting? Um, oh good, more stuff is showing up. Yeah, that's kind of more like 
what it should look like. Um, And uh, you know, like uh, Scott has seen the word Congress fourteen times. Um, and the word, you know, diplomats 11 times. Um, and so we're using a query against that on the back end here uh, in the server to, uh, and kind of mixed with some other queries to uh, render that list. So let's see if I can come in through this web server through the front end. Uh, so we're serving up some static assets. I just used node static, like it seems to work. There's about 10 or, you know, there's probably a dozen modules that are fine for serving up static files. Uh, I don't know why I did it this way for these unique array things. I think it's just because I was able to copy and paste it off of Stack Overflow. Um, I thought about importing underscore, but copy and pasting off of Stack Overflow is faster. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, so we're connecting to that Couchbase we are you know, sort of defining our um, views. So setup views, ooh, that's not good. Um, setup views is just gonna like jam this JSON at the server and then the server knows what indexes you wanna build. So these are you know, sort of the same MapReduce um, that if you've ever used CouchDB that you're familiar with. Um, there's very little difference. There's kind of, there's two arguments instead of one uh, to the function signature, but, but that's about it. Um, so yeah, so, so once we're all set up, we create an HTTP server listening on port 8080. And we wait for input from the users, which we just saw like tweets getting posted at uh, from those scripts. And then, uh, you know, or we render the leaderboard so that we can draw this HTML. And so my, uh, my leaderboard renderer is is acting goofy is why we're getting all these duplicate keys from, from my accounts. That's kind of interesting. Um, I'll maybe figure that out. Uh, so, render leaderboard is kind of where, where the interesting stuff is happening. I'm caching, I just wrote a little helper that says like, run this function and cache the output of it under this document ID because, you know, Couchbase is like a memcache got uh, time to live, you can set so the documents auto expire. Uh, and if I'm gonna be querying the views kind of like, you know, once a second per user who is hitting this mineral.local 8080 URL, um, then I wanna cache those results. Yeah, that's, that's interesting to me. Um, what's that? Yeah, I've got a bunch of, um, well anyway, yeah, I gotta figure out my math. That might be my, my after my talk fun thing. Um, so what's happening here, we know, we figure out, you know, which users there are. Um, this is just like everyone who's sh shoved a tweet into the system in the last however long. Um, and then we're going to uh, iterate over each. Um, yeah, I guess I, I wish I, I, I knew how to do that. Um, I'll just have to, maybe this will be good. Um, is, uh, is that better? Cool. Um, so, so yeah, so we're gonna iterate over all these users and run a view query, actually stitch together the results of two view queries. So here we are, we're officially in callback hell. Um, and uh, we're gonna merge these two. This one is finding the top 20 most popular words for a given user. Um, and then uh, 
this one is finding how many total tokens that user has ever seen. So that's you know that's this number here. Um, and then we're going to merge all those together. And I tried to do something. Um, I was I was hacking on it to to add an interesting feature. Like right here is where we calculate how big the font size is in that in the HTML as we render it. So it's just kind of like taking um, you know how many times the user has uh, you know seen that word and uh, you know multiplying it or, or rather taking the log and multiplying it by ten and that sort of just looks good on the screen. Um, now I tried to do something and this was kind of cool. If you uh, and now I kind of, I almost wish I had an illustration for it, but, um, okay, so we're looking at Scott's words here, and uh, what we see is, you know, like he's seen the word president the most now, but uh, what would be kind of even more interesting is if we knew, you know, which words really stood out for him as a user. So uh, what I did, I have like a, another version of software similar to this running somewhere where uh, I build this map for global, you know, just like for, for all the words. Um, and I learned that like and is a really popular word. Everyone says and all the time. Um, people also tend to say, say HTTP a lot in, on Twitter. Um, and so rather than like having on this, it's really primitive. I'm just ignoring any words, uh, four characters and shorter, just ignoring them. Um, but when I did this global word map from, you know, like the word and got said, you know, five million times, it was, you know, 5% of all words were the word and. Um, and then I take that 5% and then I take, and I do the same math but for you, and I'm like, oh, well, you know, you said the word and only 2% um, only of the total, or, or even more interesting would be like, oh, he says and a lot, like 50% of the words he says are and. And so then you can do the math, uh, the difference between those two, and really like get a word cloud at a glance of a person and see kind of like what you know what words are special for them. Um, so yeah, I had that I had that working 20 minutes ago, but I realized that it was all grouped wrong. Right? This isn't what Scott says. This is what Scott searched for. Um, and so I really need to build it around you know what the what the user said for it to to make sense in that way. Um, but I don't know. That's kind of a, a neat data structure you can pull pull out of here. Um, so yeah, I I hope that this is um, you know like nothing seems too magical about it, but that maybe um, it inspired you to play around with I don't know maybe the building command line clients with the prompt library um, and uh, you know playing around with with this incremental map reduce to uh, you know sort of see these these results as they as they're uh, you know having these indexes built as the work is going yeah and uh, if you find me later I'll figure out why it's probably I'm just like have a variable that I'm not resetting somewhere in a loop um, figure out why these are happening so uh, let's see if there's anything else I wanted to cover I think that's it um, I'm the only guy from Couchbase working in Portland. I would love for that to change. So, you know, over time, hopefully, uh, we'll be able to grow the team here. Uh, so, thank you.